Hello and welcome to Thought Provoking Tech. I'm Zach and now that we're well into 2018, I felt now would be a good time to discuss the best cloud gaming service that's available for us gamers out there on the market right now. So guys, let's go through the intro and then we'll get right to it. Without further delay, the best cloud gaming service of 2018 is Shadow. So I believe that Shadow is the best overall cloud gaming experience that we can get for us cloud gamers. Of course, your mileage may vary, but it has a very strong overall feature set. Now, before I dive into Shadow, I did want to talk about this year's runner up, which is GeForce Now. So GeForce Now is a very strong cloud gaming platform. It's backed by NVIDIA, the giant of GPUs. So it definitely has some massive power behind it and it has very good performance, which you can tell that it is backed by NVIDIA, which has some very brilliant engineers. It also is completely free right now during the beta. Of, point, of course, at one point, that will end. The beta will end, and you'll have to start paying for GeForce Now, but we're talking about the best service right now in 2018, and it is very hard to beat free, but Shadow did manage to beat free, and that is simply due to one simple issue with GeForce Now and that is their closed library. Now this isn't necessarily a bad thing because having the closed library means you don't really have to deal with Windows at all. You essentially launch the app on your computer and then you launch into the game you wanna play. You don't really have to deal with Windows anymore, which is definitely beneficial if you aren't a nerd that wants to tinker with Windows. But there is a downside to this in the fact that you have a limited library. You don't have access to games on Origin for access. You don't have games that are on the Microsoft Store, which eliminates the access to different subscription plans that both EA has implemented with their Origin Premiere, as well as Microsoft with their Xbox Game Pass. And these are very good deals for budget gamers. So it is sad to see the limited plan, but there are some benefits to it. But due to that massive restriction and not being able to play certain AAA titles or even indie titles that maybe a developer wants to offer a beta directly from their website, you can't download games like that because they're not through the Steam or the uh, Uplay or the Blizzard app. So there are some pretty big restrictions that prevent you from playing certain games. And because of that, at this point in time, it's hard to fully recommend GeForce Now if it was your only cloud gaming option. Now, of course, if you do get in the beta, it's completely free. So there's no reason not to use GeForce Now on top of Shadow, for instance. But if you only had the ability to choose one and GeForce Now started charging, it would be really hard to recommend it or simply because it has some pretty major limitations right now in the games you can play. So that pretty much covers why GeForce Now is a runner-up. It's a very strong runner-up, but it does have that major limitation holding it back from truly being the best cloud gaming service. So Shadow does present a very good overall experience, but that doesn't mean it's not without its flaws. So the biggest flaw that some people are going to experience with Shadow is the limited coverage. Currently, only the people in the U.S. and Europe are going to be able to experience Shadow. And even if you are in the U.S., only certain states in the U.S. will actually have official support for Shadow. With that being said, I'm in the center U.S., which technically isn't officially supported by either the West Coast or the D East Coast Day Center. And I've been testing Shadow since essentially February, I believe, when Shadow launched in the U.S. And I've actually had a very good experience. Of course, if you're not close to the data center in the officially supported area, certain high pace, high action games, you might not have as good experience simply due to physics and how the distance is gonna increase the latency that you have to the cloud computer. But even in faster paced FPS games like PUBG, I can essentially play just as well as I could on my local computer, which isn't necessarily saying anything due to my performance, but I actually have won PUBG matches on uh, the cloud computers just as good as I can on my local computer. So I'm definitely not the best player by any stretch of the imagination, but I really don't notice any differences in my performance. Now, of course, there are games that are gonna be really dependent on having super fast reaction time, such as Counter-Strike Go, which aren't gonna be a great fit, but do keep in mind that there is still limited coverage. They are planning on having full support for the continental US by the end of the year. So that'll be good, but there are still, of course, wide swaths of the world that won't have any official support for Shadow at all. And that is a pretty major downside because it has been a very awesome service. The second downside that I can think of for Shadow really is the pricing structure. So for $35 per month, you get an unlimited number of hours, which is an amazing deal for people that game a lot. So if you're a hardcore gamer, maybe you game every night or you're a weekend warrior, you might put 
12 to 15 hours in a single weekend and then you might game a little bit during the week but not much and mainly game on the weekends it's going to be an amazing deal for you because you don't have to worry about how many hours you're racking up if you're about out of credits or if you're going to end up with a hundred dollar bill at the end of the month and if you accidentally leave the computer on you don't have to worry about it chewing up credits or charging you you know 60 cents an hour and then coming back two days later to find a huge bill because you forgot to leave your computer on so there are some massive benefits but if you are a casual gamer that you might only game five hours a week uh, you have a full-time job that keeps you busy, you have a family, so you don't have a lot of time to play, then it is going to be a pretty expensive service for you. And there are some strong alternatives such as Paperspace using Parsec. I would highly recommend that if you are a more casual gamer, simply because it's going to be much cheaper for you in the long run. Just make sure you shut down your computer at the end of the night. You can set up an auto shutdown like after one hour. That will prevent that, but other, at other times you might want to remove that so that if you want to leave your computer running and to like do a render or something, if you do other things on your cloud computer, just make sure that you always shut it down if you do increase the time span for the auto timeout. So, with that being said, so we've discussed the runner up GeForce Now, and we've also discussed some of the issues with Shadow. But what makes Shadow the best option for us cloud gamers? Well, to be 100% honest, there isn't a single feature that Shadow has that makes it quote unquote the best. It's really the overall feature set of Shadow that makes it the best option for us cloud gamers. So one of those features that I love is the fact that Window, or Shadow runs Windows 10. So rather than having a closed library like GeForce Now or having a computer that runs Windows Server like many other options out there the market use, such as uh, Liquid Sky, AWS, and Paperspace, where Shadow is unique in the fact of running Windows 10, that gives you access to the Microsoft Store. So many people will probably scoff at the Microsoft Store saying it's just full of junk. But the Microsoft Store gives you access to some exclusive games but it also gives you access to the Xbox Game Pass, which is a great value, especially as Microsoft continues to merge their Xbox game library with their Windows game library, which is a great move and is gonna create a great value option. And on that note, cloud gaming does have the cool benefit of giving you access to high-end gaming hardware. In terms of like the Shadow Machine, if you're gonna buy a computer that essentially has a GTX 1080, a very good processor, the amount of RAM that it has, you're talking about a computer that's probably gonna cost about $1,500. And you get that value for $35 per month. And once you calculate the value of Shadow over the years, you're essentially paying about the same, but you have very good hardware right off the bat. And by the time you saved up that much money, especially if you're a budget gamer or you are a student in college or high school even, that just has a part-time job, it gives you access to high-end gaming hardware for a relatively low cost. And then it, that is compounded by the fact that Blade, the company by, behind Shadow, has shown commitment to providing the best gaming experience possible with server grade hardware. For example, we recently just saw the storage upgrade, which not only added a plan where you can upgrade your storage capacity, but they also increased the storage speeds. They're also working on a CPU upgrade. They've rolled that out in the European data center, but they haven't rolled that out in the US yet, but that storage upgrade, or the, sorry, the CPU upgrade will provide faster CPU base clocks which will make games perform better because some games aren't as well optimized for multiple cores and rely more on a single or a couple cores at a higher clock frequency rather than having multiple cores at a lower clock frequency. So Blade is investing quite a bit of money in providing very high end hardware for us to game on, which is definitely a great end result for us. So the fact that they've already done, rolled out a couple upgrades to the system in the like half a year that I've been testing it is pretty impressive that by itself. In addition, we also have seen a very good performance from the system. In terms of performance, the P5000 that is running is essentially the workstation equivalent of the GTX 1080. So you're talking about very good performance in games. And while I can't compare it directly to the GeForce Now because I can't run fraps to directly capture the frame rate, it's definitely a top-notch experience that is as good or very close to the other options out there in the market and even better than some options such as Liquid Sky, which is running the uh, NVIDIA Grid M60, and due to the fact that the way that it's shared, you don't have somewhat limited performance. So it's definitely up there as one of the best performers in the cloud gaming realm. So we already have the fact that it runs Windows 10. We have great value over time by not having to have a huge initial investment for your computer. You also have the benefit of continually upgrading hardware without you having to fork over the cash for those upgrades. We have very good performing hardware. Then you have the fact that the software has been pretty much flawless. I haven't had really any issues with the software. It's been running very flawless. I haven't had any mouse issues where the games don't treat the mouse differently. That can be said the same for other uh, software options out there in the market. So you have so many 
herbal features that kind of add together to make a very good, very powerful overall feature set. And that's what makes Shadow the best in my opinion. You have a completely open library where you can even install options such as Parsec. And the fact that Parsec allows multiple people to play on the same computer. So if you have games that support split screen or local multiplayer, you can actually play with multiple people on the same cloud gaming rig. And the fact that it's in the cloud means it has very good upload. Where if you're gonna share your home computer, you might have a good download, but you probably don't have a good upload speed because most uh, consumer ISPs sell uh, asymmetrical internet where you have a very good download or relatively good download to your upload. For example, you, normally this is about 10 times the download as your upload speed, but it does fluctuate from ISP to ISP. So while you might have good enough internet to play cloud gaming because you're essentially just downloading data, you're not uploading a lot of data, data because the button presses don't really add up too much overall comparatively to all the gigabytes you're downloading with Cloud gaming, especially if you're playing at a high frame rate and at 1080p. So to share your computer with someone else would mean you need high upload rate. So using a service like Parsec with a cloud computer means you have that high upload rate, which means you can share your cloud computer with multiple people. So the fact that it's a completely open system allows you to install cool software like Parsec. And the fact that they have the storage upgrade means you can even install you know, your workstation or your work applications such as Adobe software and a dot of that software so you can use 3d CAD or you can edit videos and stuff in the cloud so I will be doing more videos about kind of everything you can do on the cloud with these cloud computers in the future but the possibilities are almost limitless due to the fact of having an open system so there are some very awesome benefits from shadow and I hope I've expressed my thoughts on why Shadow is the best to a good degree, it's really not just a single feature set of Shadow, it's really the overall feature that they're putting together. So, so thanks for watching this video, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did give it a big like, I greatly appreciate your guys' support. Also, if you have any comments about what you think is the best cloud gaming service out there on the market is, please leave those in the comments below. I definitely wanna hear your all's feedback and how it differs or agrees with my opinion. So once again, guys, thanks for watching, and until next time, sack out.